Which one is faster, Mac or PC? Well, today we will find out once in for all with this custom built water cooled PC that has an Intel 12900K and an RTX 3090, just like what Apple compared the Mac Studio to on stage at their event. And we're gonna see, did Apple really exaggerate all those numbers saying that this matches it or beats it? Uh, it's gonna get interesting. And some tests, yes, and other tests, no. And I'm gonna do a bunch of real world tests, not only some benchmarks, I wanna see how well does it do as far as coding, 3D rendering, video editing, photo editing, responsiveness, and a lot more. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing I have to mention are some key differences. Of course, this PC is big. It's a standard tower. You have room for a triple liquid cooling system. You have expandability. You have slots that you can actually swap out yourself instead of ones that are locked down from Apple. So that is the benefit. Now with that, it is also loud. We're gonna talk about power usage in a bit but the fans, they're running, you can hear them, and especially when you're pushing that, either the graphics card or the CPU, and both at once, it takes off like a jet engine to cool itself down. Now the Mac Studio, on the other hand, it is tiny, incredibly tiny. I'll just grab it like this. Um, you can literally take this with you. If you have a monitor at home, monitor at work or wherever, they actually sell a bag for this. So that is another benefit, but you don't get expandability. Now, as far as ports, this can go both ways because for the PC, you can buy a motherboard that does not have Thunderbolt, like the one that uh, Mark used. By the way, thank you, Mark, for letting us use your awesome awesome PC for this testing. And you can spend a lot more money to get things like Thunderbolt, 10 gigabit ethernet, which all do come with the Mac Studio. This one has six Thunderbolt ports, 10 gig ethernet built in, plus an SD card reader. So total pricing, if you end up specking it out the same as far as RAM with really fast DDR5 uh, and storage with really fast comparable storage, they currently are roughly around five grand each because PC parts are also inflated. So you kind of have to get lucky to buy one of these 3090s. Jumping into performance, I was shocked by how snappy this system was. It scored 290 in speedometer 2.0, which is insanely fast. Now, the Mac did beat it at 300, but man, when you're doing anything online, on the system, installing stuff, I've never felt a Windows PC that was this fast. And that's because a single core actually beats out the Mac Studios M1 Ultra, almost 2000 points, incredible performance. And when we switch to multi-core, which runs about 30 different tests, it does get beat out by about 6,000 points in favor of the Mac Studio. So we have more power for a variety of simple, quick tasks. Now, when we jump into Cinebench, which maxes out the CPUs, well here, the 12900K actually beats out by about 2,500 points. So we have more raw performance. Now, when it's doing that, the fans just go crazy. Even during Geekbench, the multi-core score, that's because this thing, once it actually settles down, uses about 210 watts compared to 58 on the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra. So that is a lot more power. It actually peaks higher than that, but it also runs super hot because in order to get that much performance out of the Intel chip, it needs a lot of power. Actually more power than the CPU and GPU combined uses in this system. Now, one thing that we have found is that with Apple Silicon, once you start scaling up to such high core counts, we are getting some bottlenecks with software. For example, with this Cinebench where it scored 24,000, it actually is not using as much capabilities as it could. And we were also told that it's using an Intel based backend. So with like the M1 chip, it scored really well. Uh, it's not as limited because of like translation or anything else. But with these, you start hitting it more. We're gonna come up to this as, with other tests. Whereas with some real world programs that are fully built, surprisingly Adobe Lightroom, it can actually use more wattage and get more performance. Now, before jumping into the real world stuff, we have to talk about the graphics. So this has a 64 core version of the M1 Ultra compared to the RTX 3090 with its own 24 gigabytes of dedicated memory. Now in Geekbench, that thing scores 233,000 points as far as the CUDA score compared to 102. Massive difference, over double. How can the Mac Studio compete? <laughs> well, once again, there's issues where it's not actually utilizing the GPU all the way. 
uh, which is why we have such a big gap in performance. But in other programs that do fully utilize the capabilities like GFX Bench, here it got 485 frames per second in the off-screen test, so that means it's not gonna be affected by resolution. Now the RTX 3090 got 514, so it did beat it out, but it's not more than double the score. Now this shows you the gaming performance of the GPU, so it is very close to the RTX 3090, but of course the issue is there are no games. And some people are testing things like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but that's running an Intel version with Rosetta bottlenecking like crazy. Of course, if you want to play games, you definitely should buy the PC. Now on the flip side, the Mac Studio is the way to go for people that code. It is insanely good. It actually beat out the 28 core Xeon in the Mac Pro, which literally costs four times as much money and it's quite a bit faster. But of course, the Windows PC cannot run Xcode, but Matthew Moniz did an excellent test where he compiled Mozilla Firefox on both and the Mac Studio was almost twice as fast. Huge gap in performance. So that is insane. Now, as far as 3D rendering, well, we have the latest version that was released of Blender, and here we tested Party Tug with the EV rendering engine, which is nice for quick previews, and well, the Mac Studio got smoked. We have four and a half seconds compared to 2.8 very quick on the PC. Now for high quality renders, you wanna use a Cycles engine. Both do support GPU compute. And here, the Mac Studio got a minute and 65 seconds. That's way faster than CPU, but guess how fast the PC was with the RTX 3090. I was using OptiX, so it's the fastest engine. My mind was blown. Go ahead and comment down below. All right, it took 15 seconds compared to a minute and six seconds. That is absolute insanity. <laughs> How in the world is it set that fast? Well, first off, Blender isn't that efficient. It is running metal, but it's like a translation layer, almost like you're using crossover to translate it in like an emulator basically. So it's not very efficient and we should be getting an update that's actually built for metal with a new engine that'll make it a lot faster. But even when that comes, the PC is gonna be a lot faster because you have those ray tracing cores there that are insanely, insanely fast. So if you wanna do 3D rendering and you care about speed, definitely go for the PC. Now, for those of you guys that work with images, let's see what we get. We have a test here with 42 megapixel raw images with a bunch of different effects applied. And man, the PC was quick. It exported these to JPEG in 62 seconds. Very, very fast, super impressive. But the Mac Studio did it in 45 seconds. Insane performance compared to previous Macs, including high-end Mac Pros. Now, we also tested out a panorama. These are actually 50 megapixel raw files. We have nine images. The Mac Studio took 34 and a half seconds compared to 45.5 seconds. So for photo editors, doesn't matter if you're doing simple things in Photoshop, you're doing Lightroom, you're merging stuff, the Mac Studio is super fast and that's pretty much because of the unified memory, even though the PC has 5,600 megahertz DDR5, very fast, having it on the chip right there with the processor makes it so snappy and has a lot more channels the way it's designed. Now getting into video editing, I actually use Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut, of course Final Cut just on the Mac, to show you guys an honest true picture of what's happening with a variety of codecs as well and what does better depending on what you do. Now the first thing that people are asking for is denoising in DaVinci Resolve because this will just hit the GPU and it won't factor in the media engines that Apple is using that are great. It won't factor in CPU, the RAM, it just hits your graphics. Now here, denoising 4K, 24 frames per second black magic raw with some tough temporal and spatial noise reduction, uh, we got 19 to 20 frames per second. Much better than the M1 Max that gets 11 to 12, a lot more performance, not double though, but the PC with the RTX 3090 was able to get a perfect 24 frames per second. Not only that, it only uh, used 80% of that GPU, meaning we have extra power. So 
that gives it about 40% more raw graphics performance for video editing. But of course, that doesn't include all the things that Apple packed into this for smoothness of timeline and exporting. So with standard footage, none of these will ever have an issue super smooth. And the Mac Studio is way faster than the Windows PC. Now, yes, we are using the RTX 3090s NVENC encoding engines for all of these tests. And just because people say this has unfair advantage because it has the special uh, media engines, well, the Windows PC, that graphics card also has it, as well as a new 12th gen CPU, which really helps on a couple of these tests, but the Mac is just on a whole nother level. Now, one thing I wanna point out is the fact that Resolve was so much faster than Final Cut and Premiere Pro with the Mac. Now, that is because it looks like Final Cut is not utilizing all the performance here. It's only using half of the encoders and decoders because Apple did not release the version of Final Cut that they advertised on stage and they put in their fine print. They gave all the reviewers that version, but not to us. And they're not even letting us get the beta version. So it's been, you know, about a week now and we don't have it. So Resolve, they actually updated it and they're getting all the performance, but the Mac is definitely faster for most of you guys that do simple editing with 4K. Now, as far as raw power for stabilization, we have an insane score in Final Cut. It has just been way faster. And as far as DaVinci Resolve, the Mac is also faster than the PC. And this actually maxes out your GPU in DaVinci Resolve. So the efficiency with unified memory helps here. And in Premiere Pro, it's just CPU based, only about 30% of the CPU, and it's slower on the Mac. And now let's finish off with some tougher tests here. We have Canon R5 footage. This thing stuttered like crazy on my Mac Pro. It stutters on most computers, but Intel's 12th gen, it has the decoders for it. So now it is great. And it takes two minutes and 38 seconds in Premiere and DaVinci Resolve. Now on the Mac, it takes two minutes, definitely faster. And on Final Cut, it's actually slower, almost three, because they have not updated it. Come on, Apple, what are you guys doing? Uh, now, of course, these are shorter projects because we test and retest, it takes so long, but neither of these systems throttle, even though uh, the Windows PC, it gets very hot and very loud, and the Mac, it runs at 50 to 60 degrees Celsius for CPU and GPU, so no throttling. So if you have an hour project, you guys could just scale up the differences. Now, for those of you guys that are working with ProRes, the Mac is in killer. It has dedicated hardware to decode and encode, so it's not putting any stress on the CPU to do that. We have an insane difference between the Mac and the Windows PC. And in DaVinci Resolve, it literally takes 50 seconds to export this 8K to 4K project because it's been updated for the encoders. But even without that, we see a huge difference. Now I'm not exporting to ProRes because you can't do that on a Windows PC. So it's going to H.265 uh, to keep it fair. But if you're working with ProRes, you have to get a Mac that has this hardware. Now going to the toughest test, it's gonna max out your CPU and your GPU. This is 8K Red Raw. As far as playback, they are actually very, very close. In Premiere Pro, both can run it perfectly at half resolution in an 8K timeline. DaVinci Resolve, you can also set the option. So I was really surprised this is the first time that a Mac can actually compete with this high-end RTX graphics card as far as smoothness in all of these tests, they, they're super close. Uh, now, when we go to export it, the Mac is a lot faster in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, literally being insanely fast in Premiere. For some reason, Premiere uh, is really great for red footage. In Final Cut, it's definitely the slowest as far as the Mac. It still hasn't been updated once again, which is just dumb at this point. Uh, but you guys can see the differences between the Mac and PC. So clearly for video editing, as long as you're only using one GPU in your PC instead of two or three or four, uh, this Mac Studio is awesome. And the cool thing is if you're somebody who does video editing or you're on set, you're doing cuts, you could take so much power with you in your hand like this. Now for 3D rendering, gaming, definitely the PC, but for coding, for photo editing, um, for other things like video editing, 
this thing does do a great job. Now, was Apple correct in some of their charts? In some, yes, some seemed a little bit off, uh, and hopefully we do get more updates as far as optimization and new rendering engines being built for this to speed it up. But overall, I thought that the Mac would get smoked in some of these tests where it held its ground pretty dang well. So you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Check out one of those great videos right over there. Subscribe above to help us reach our goal of a million subscribers if you guys appreciate it. We have tons of videos coming. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.